Adam Kaplan is our NFL insider and sports grid NFL analyst. Almost three decades covering the NFL. You can follow him on X at Kaplan NFL. And he has just come back from lovely Latrobe, Pennsylvania, right near Ligonier, uh, Arnie Palmer's home, uh, to see the Steelers at St. Vincent at training camp. We'll talk about that in a second. I want to start with uh, Reddick's holdout. You know, I've said earlier on the show today, uh, this has gotten ugly where he's not showing up at all, getting fined 50000 a day. And then Joe Douglas flat out came out today and said, uh, you know, Reddick said, I want to be traded. And then uh, moments later, within minutes, Douglas said, uh, allegedly, you know, we're not trading you. And we'll just let this continue on until you get here. Now, Douglas claims they won't even begin to negotiate with Reddick until he shows up. Yeah, so Scott, let's pick it up there. Joe Douglas is what we call an old school GM. He wants things done a certain way. Old school GMs typically will not negotiate with an agent unless the player shows up. And Reddick is not has not shown up. You mentioned fifty thousand dollars a day. Remember what happened with Chris Jones a couple of years ago? And he wound up really not getting what he wanted until last year, of course, when he got his deal done. So it, it doesn't help you by not showing up. Half of life, as they say, is showing up. And it's not like the Jets didn't know that he wanted a new deal. They talked to his agent and, and Hassan at the time of the trade, but they could not get that deal done then. And now you fast forward it now, and you have an ugly situation. Now, Will McDonald, by the way, the first-round pick out of last year, out of Iowa State, I'm told, has done very well in his place. But he's not as accomplished, obviously, as Raddick, who, by the way, turns 30 this fall. Now, he's, he's scheduled to make just over $14 million. None of that money is guaranteed. Uh, Reddick, I'm told, wanted somewhere over $25 million a year was what he was looking for. I don't know how he'd view it now that the Brian Burns deal got done, which is over $28 million. Now, Burns is younger, no question about it, but Asante, a terrific player, great for the community. And by the way, we have to remember this. He's from the New Jersey area. This is a great, a great way to end his career if he gets his deal. And this is not what the Jets wanted. Uh, it, but, Scott, I could tell you my experience of covering these situations is Clubs typically believe at, like they're going to get a deal done or they won't do it. And it's not like this is a secret. They were dealing with the sign and his, and his agent at the time of the trade in March. That's why it makes that's why it's so surprising that a deal's not done. I get it, there's still three weeks left, just under four weeks until the season starts, but this is not the kind of situation you want with Aaron Rodgers healthy. There's a lot of optimism around the, the Jets will be with the Jets next week when they have a joint practice with the Giants. But bottom line is this is not a good story for them. Uh, this should not have happened. By the way, the Eagles knew it. Uh, they were not going to extend uh, Reddick Steele. They're not going to pay Hassan what he wanted. They got they got what they thought was a good deal, a future 2025 third-round pick that could uh, be as much as a second. So right now, the Eagles obviously are keeping an eye on this, and maybe they knew something because a deal is not getting done or w will not even be talked about. Uh, Joe Douglas put it out there. That's a statement from the club. I mean, this is actually real. I know this guy. He's not going to deal with this unless Hassan shows up, then we'll start looking at it well you also know Hassan Reddick you know Douglas and you know Reddick and you know how good he is what is the problem here can this guy not lead the Jets in sacks uh, I, there's nothing wrong with his game I don't understand yeah. why the Eagles uh, it was obviously they just didn't want to pay him they how can he not be worth the money if he has the numbers that he has in the sacks yeah it, it is really confounding now I'll say this about Hassan Reddick Okay, he, he is, since the Cardinals could not figure out how to use him, the Eagles sure did, made him a stand-up pass rusher, and he was phenomenal. He did also, by the way, before that, uh, he got the big deal with the Eagles. Now, I say big deal. It was three years, $45 million two years ago in March of 2022. Uh, coming off of a career year with the, the Panthers, then did it again in 22 in the Eagles Super Bowl run. He was phenomenal. Not quite as good last year, but still very good. Another great part of Hassan Reddick is his durability. He's one of the most durable players of his day. Just a terrific football player. You know, he was, it's funny, the Cardinals, Scott, they tried to make him inside back, but that never worked. Uh, the Cardinals, late in his career with them, moved him to edge rusher. And that's what he's done uh, the last three years. And he's terrific. But look, he, 30 is, look, w w we could argue where he's at in his career. 30, typically, 32, 33, you're done in the National Football League. But he's been so healthy. But the one leverage point here is, look, they've got Will McDonald, who was a first round pick last year. Now, this, I say that. The Jets, the Jets want him in camp, and if he shows up, 
something could potentially get done. But I, I, I know the way Joe does things. He, and Woody Johnson, the owner, they're not going to deal with him unless he shows up. Here at M story. All right, you were at the Steelers camp for two yeah. days. Uh, where do we begin? Let's begin with let's begin with their offensive scheme. Now we know Arthur Smith. He's there because he wants to run the football. That's the kind of offensive coordinator and play caller he is. Did a great job with Derrick Henry. It didn't go so well uh, during his his tenure with the Falcons as the head coach and play caller. But you know, it starts with the run. It always has and always will uh, under Mike Tomlin. That's what he wants. Uh, and that's what they're going to get with Arthur Smith. They have two really good backs. Najee Harris looks really good, by the way. He's in, he's in pretty good shape. They've got that great one-two punch with him and Jalen Warren. And then when you really look at it, and it's a problem, opposite George Pickens. Van Jefferson, I'm told, has been a really good story, former Rams second-round pick. But I think if, you, if you're really deep at receiver, he's probably a number four or number three, not number two. And that's why we have the heightened interest in Brandon Ayuk. But the Ayuk is still dealing with the Niners. They're still trying to get something done with him. It's not going to be easy, but getting back to the Steelers, uh, Calvin Austin also has made some plays the last couple of days. Now, Sunday's practice, because they played Friday night uh, at home against the Texans, they were in shells. And it was a shorter practice, about 90 minutes. But today's practice, in beautiful weather in Latrobe, at St. Vincent's College, right? They, got, they brought the pads out, and they hit. Okay, Scott, they're one of the few teams talking to the Lions. The Lions also hit quite a bit in training camp, but the, the Steelers do. They're in pads a lot and showed it was very, very physical. There, there was about a skirmish for about a second and a half, and the guys were laughing, but there was a lot of pushing. Uh, very spirited practice, but Scott, I can tell you a quarterback. You don't need to watch long to see the difference between Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Fields has got the great arm, great athlete. Russell's in pretty good physical shape, but it, it's his willingness to make tough throws. Justin Fields is more what we call a see-it-and-throw-it guy. Wilson, when he decides he's going to throw it, he throws it with anticipation and timing, and that ball came out that he had a very good practice. Uh, but listen, Scott, it's a two tight end offense. There's no question. But Darnell Washington, who I'm guessing, who's six foot seven, is at least two eighty. He looks like an offensive tackle, but he but he can run. He looks really really good. Frymuth is healthy on the funny of his rookie deal. But what they have to do, Scott, is they have to add a receiver. That that's the offense. They they've got to do something by the start of the season. Oh, I'm told with um, Roman Wilson come back from his ankle injury. There's optimism that he'll start practicing with the next seven to 10 days coming off that ankle injury. But defensive, Scott, excellent front seven. Uh, Peyton Wilson, the rookie linebacker, he, he had a minor injury that he's fine, I'm, as, my, as I understand it. But bottom line is, Scott, they're going to have to look at the cornerback position. Not very good depth. Uh, they're, they're good with the two starters, with Joey Porter Jr. and Dante Jackson. Uh, nickel corner, they're still trying to figure that out. And they don't have very good depth at outside corner. Th those will be the concerns. But this is a good team, but still a lot of questions. Backup corner, nickel, and wide receiver opposite the, the very talented George Pickett. Well, I just don't see the IU deal happening because they engaged, re-engaged, still didn't yeah. get it done, offered no receiver, offering picks only. And when the Niners started talking to IU again, don't you feel like they're going to uh, get a deal with him in San Francisco? Yeah, because the Steelers are another old school team, man. I don't see them moving off of their stance. And I've said this for three months. I didn't really want to leave, but he just felt like they weren't negotiating in good faith. And the Niners know that they need him. And by the way, Ricky Pearsall, their their first round pick, is dealing with that shoulder injury. He's over the hamstring injury. I'm told. So uh, they they they'll continue to 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 work on that. But at least Ayuk showed up to camp, and that that helps.